Hey guys, Sarkat here. Now, before we get into this, I just want to quickly say I'm not re-rolling off course, Caro, and I just want to try something out. Also, why am I in a duvet? I feel really ill, and I'm having a duvet day, and that is just a day where I am not going anywhere without my trusty duvet, because, I mean, look at my face. I look terrible. Now, why am I talking about Fire Never Minds? Fire Never Minds is a build I've been wanting to play for a really long time, but I just haven't got around to it, and people keep mentioning it, and it's just making me want to play it. So I'm just throwing out some ideas now. I want to get some feedback on those ideas and then for future characters I can try this out. But don't worry, I'm still playing Corsica. I'm happy playing it because I've been really ill, because I've been busy. I haven't had much time to play recently. The 24 hours that internet really set me back. And yeah, I'll get a Corsica update up for tonight, but there's nothing ready for right now. So what's cool about Fire Never Mind? What's wrong with Fire Never Mind? Fire Never Mind has very good map clear for a mine skill and has amazing single target. The main issue, however, is the mana cost. Now, this mana cost is absolutely insane. For comparison, look at Explosive Arrow. Explosive Arrow only has a mana cost of 27, and Explosive Arrow is known as being a skill with a ridiculous mana cost. So, the mana cost of Fire Nova Mine is really, really absurd. Now, Fire Nova Mine, the reason why it does get mentioned and the reason why it does get used is it's very good for boss killing. It gets a lot of, uh, C well, it gets some C for Shaper Killers. And the reason why it was recently mentioned and why it's become back into my head. I was thinking about the skill a few weeks ago when I was still like a bit iffy on the bow hype dream. Um, and I'd kind of forgotten about it. But then I was watching the most recent Yoji and PC podcast and they mentioned the bloody helm enchant again. It's like, guys, stop trying to make me make this build. So if you don't know, the helm enchant is fine over mine repeats an additional two times. Now, why is that so good? The base mechanics of fine over, if you don't know, you lay a remote mine. Cool. you then detonate it, which creates a series of fire novas, each sequential nova, so one after, from the same mine will do higher damage than the previous. Okay, okay, that's not that crazy. Well, at level 20, you get 29% more damage per repeat. It has a base of three, so the first one will do this much base damage, then the second one will do 29 more, then the third one will do 29 more, and then when the Helm Enchant, the 4th will do 29 more, and the 5th will do 29 more. Ideally, you get a level 21 because you get more base damage and you make it into the 30% threshold. But basically, the Helm Enchant for Fire Nova Mine is insane. It's better than like the Tornado Shot Enchants, and the Tornado Shot Enchants are dumb. So basically, it is just everything about it is absurd. But you get back to this rather obnoxious mana cost. Now, there are a few ways of doing fire nova mines the most common use and again this is a very niche skill is you do poison shenanigans you do stuff with occultist now even the people who are like rocking shaper with fire nova poison occultist they're using two sometimes three mana potions they're using like just a base divine mana pot then they're using the unique mana pot lavanga's spirit whatever it's called which gives you free mana cost during flask effect so I've seen people killing Shaper with three mana potions. We don't want to use three mana potions. Are we going to go to Shaper and Hardcore? No, it's me. Like, I might do some at Ziri, but I probably aren't going to do any Hardcore Shaper stuff. I'm just going to do some maps, kill some bosses, but like not stupid levels of bosses because it's just not worth it for me as a Hardcore player with the way I play the game. Not worth. So anyway, what are my options when it comes to Ascendancies and all of that good stuff? Now, if you're doing the whole poison setup, the most obvious case would be to do stuff with a cultist. And that would be get Void Beacon, get Profane Bloom, good for map clear, get an extra curse, get Wicked Ward. This is just my CA tree, so ignore this. Um, the other obvious option is Saboteur, though I really dislike Saboteur for mines and for traps. So anyway, so you get mine laying speed, LE damage, you get increased AoE. That's really juicy. That is the best thing about Saboteur, in my opinion. Uh, increased damage if you have traps, but whatever. So, mine link speed, LE damage. Mine link speed, increased damage you've denoed recently, recently, blah, blah, blah. Chance to get an extra mine, blah, blah, blah. Mine arming speed, whatever. LE damage, LE damage. 10% of fizz, that doesn't affect us. So you get 10% fire pen, reduced damage taken from traps and mines, who cares? And then you get chance to make a smap, smoke cloud on hit. So you get some like quality of life for mines, you get some AoE, the AoE is the best bit, but frankly, it's not that good. Now, purely from a I don't want to use mana potions point of view, 
I actually really like Trickster. And Trickster is an ascendancy that I really like. It's a very undervalued ascendancy, but it's very hard to justify. And this might be one of the few builds where it is worth justifying, but I'm still not sure if it's even worth it for this. So I'll hear what you guys have to say. So off the bat, you get attack and cast speed. Fire Nova Mines is one of the few skills which actually benefits from cast speed. The cast speed reduces the delay on each pulse. Uh, movement skills cost no mana, so your shield charge or your wedding blade if you're using dual consuming darks or a delirium weapon in a consuming dark. Obviously you won't have a shield, but whatever. Increase attack and cast speed if you've used movement skill recently. So, the attack speed means you move faster with your movement skill and the cast speed makes your fire over better, so that's obviously pretty powerful. Weave the Arcane. Increase max mana, increase mana regen, 20% chance to recover 10% of max mana when you use a skill. Very powerful. Good when you drop your mines, good when you drop your movement skills. It just makes the mana less of an issue right off the bat. More mana, more attack and cast speed. Evasion rating, ev energy shield rating, attack and cast speed. 20% faster start of energy shield recharge, pretty good. Dodge, spell dodge, obviously pretty good. 10% increased movement skills, 10% uh, increased movement speed while on full energy shield. Think of this like the boot enchant, 10% increased movement speed if you haven't been hit recently. Just think about it like that, pretty good. Evasion, max energy shield, attack and cast speed, already established. A bunch of flat evasion, a bunch of flat energy shield, 20% increased attack and cast speed if, if, uh, Ill, if energy shield recharge has started recently. Pretty good. 20% more chance to evade while not full energy shield. Pretty good. So basically you do some hybrid evasion CI shenanigans, Pogu champion. Again, most of these mind builds aren't that, um, well, aside from needing excess amounts of mana, they don't rely on too many auras. You either run Blasphemy auras or you can just get away running a Grace or something. Consider that. Um, but what makes this very powerful is it potentially means you don't need to run all the mana pots, even though you don't get that much damage. You get a lot of like attack speed and a lot of cast speed. You can make up for the damage on the flask. You make up for the utility on the flask. So I think that Trickster might actually be a very good, very good option. Another thing which is interesting about Trickster is it makes running something like it's Zero Spender a lot better because you're getting benefits from running both Evasion and Energy Shield. Now, off the bat, it's Zero Spender is a hybrid armor, Evasion, Energy Shield chest piece. It makes getting off colors very easy. You could go for this option, which gives you the most Energy Shield. Again, remember that this is without quality, so with quality, it's like a 700-800 ES chest. Also, keep in mind, we do get 250 flat ES from being a trickster, so we can get away with running a non-GG chest piece. But it gives you a bunch of all res, which is pretty juicy. But the main thing, 100 mana gained on kill. For map clear, this plus a weave the arcade would make mana sustain an absolute joke. Now, I don't know if you'd want to go for the pure energy shield piece, or you'd want Sorry, I want to go for the hybrid evasion energy shield. Obviously, less energy shield. This, with quality, it's like high 600s. So not perfect, but you do get that 250 flat and you get a lot of juicy evasion. A good thing about this kind of chest, very cheap. The pure ES it series still costs about 50 odd C. Generally speaking, they're a very cheap chest piece, but these hybrid ones are like 20 C. So there's a lot of potential there, but yeah. Basically, I'm thinking about playing Fire Novas in the future. Maybe at the very end of this league, I'll experiment a little bit with it, but I'm mostly thinking about for next league. I doubt we're going to get many balance changes. I think most of the balance changes we put off till Act 5, but there's no way in hell that Fire Nova Mine is getting nerfed in the next patch, so this might be something that I want to play. If you guys have any suggestions for this kind of build, please do leave it down below. I'm Taki, I'm Marie Ill, and I will do my best to get you guys a Corsic Arrow update tonight. Have a good day. Bye-bye.